a stormy night in the Midwest. DeKalb, Illinois, and Husky Stadium, the backdrop for tonight's college football opener between the Black Knights of Army and the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Army coach Rich Ellerson brought winning football back to the banks of the Hudson after celebrating the program's first bowl victory in 25 years, while at the same time, Northern Illinois capped off a school record 11-win campaign with an impressive humanitarian bowl victory. Hi, welcome to college football. Sean Kenny alongside former assistant Notre Dame coach and recruiting coordinator Bob Kamel. And Bob, new era begins tonight for Northern Illinois. Well, actually, this era began with, with Joe Novak and then moved on to Jerry Kill, writing the ship here in DeKalb. And now Coach Dorn inherits a program that is in really, really good shape. One of the things he's going to have to do today, one of the problems, opening day, new staff, game management, communication, getting the play in, communicating with the officials, communicating with special teams, substitutions. Try as you may during the week to replicate this. It can't be done in true fashion until game day comes along. Dave Dorn has the difficult task of now preparing for Army, who traditionally is one of the tougher teams to get set to play. Well, I don't think there's any question. You're dealing with a very high-end type of student athlete, a high-end type of uh, a football player. Army, Navy, Air Force, you can really put in sophisticated offenses and defenses because these young men are in tune to doing things from a study standpoint, from an execution standpoint, and when they take the field, they are always ruthless. It's going to be a great, great game. Watch that Army pursuit today on defense. Should be a lot of fun. Northern Illinois and Army, we've had rain throughout the course of the day, lightning and thunder, opening night in DeKalb. Northern Illinois and Army coming up. College football next. And welcome back to Husky Stadium, DeKalb, Illinois, as we get set to kick off the brand new year. College football as Northern Illinois and the Army Black Knights. Freshman Tyler Riedel tees it up, and we are underway from DeKalb, a rainy night here in the Midwest. On the return, this is Maples. Raymond Maples to the 20, gets outside to the 25, and is twisted down at the 26-yard line. Out comes the Army offense, led by the junior quarterback, Trent Steelman. This matchup, we're going to see two of the premier quarterbacks. Steelman making his 26th consecutive start. Six-foot junior, 204-pounder, running that triple option offense. Two slot backs will be Raymond Maples, a 6'1 sophomore, 200 pounds, and Malcolm Brown. The fullback is the weapon. That's Jared Hassan. He's a 6'2 junior, 230. Army opens up with the bone. Receiver left and right. Steelman looks like he's audible in to begin. Ducks in under his center, hands the ball off. Maples trying to get to the outside as Northern Illinois stretched it out. Nothing there. That was just a basic off-tackle play, a little bit of misdirection. Two backs came in one way, the other back went in the other direction to Maples. Great pursuit by the Northern Illinois defense, creating a new front. Trent Steelman and Army going with a no huddle from the 26, second down and 10. Again, that Army offensive line, that's going to be the key for this season for the Black Knights. We'll talk more about that throughout the course of the broadcast. One returning starter up front, and that's their big left guard, Frank Allen. And Steelman taking his time. He will turn, wants to throw it, now flush from the pocket, throws underneath, too tall, incomplete, tried to find his fullback, Hassan, coming out of the backfield. Excellent call, a little bit of play action. I mean, that ball was right on the, uh, right on the money. That, he's still running. Here's that Army offense, Hassan, a 1,000-yard rusher last season. Maples and Turrentine in the backfield. Stevens and McFarland, two guys who really stepped up in spring ball. An offensive front line anchored by Frank Allen, the 6'4 junior, 275 pounds, the lone returning starter from last year's team. Passing situation, third and 10. Army will run the option, and Steelman is caught in the backfield. Breaking through was Joe Windsor, the sophomore, 230-pound in, and the Black Knights with a quick three and out. There is a flag down near the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Too many men in the backfield on the offense. Failing to decline. Fourth down. Sean, this is one of the things. When you come out in, in the wishbone offense, which they haven't been in, 
and all of a sudden you're taking plays from the sideline and the communication is such a factor. The other thing is, remember this, these big guys up front, they're in a three-point stance for a long time, and that can be tiring. When you run a traditional huddle offense, those big guys get back to the huddle, they get a little bit of breath, come out and run the next play. Not in this offense. They have to be in great shape. Colin Walk on the punt. This will be his first punt, and it's blocked. It's blocked as the ball rolls near the 20, picked up to the 10, 5, and touchdown, Northern Illinois on the special teams. Courtney Steven picks it up and runs into the end zone. Wow, Jimmy Ward came, came almost clean. Big, big turnover for the Huskies. You heard both coaches talking so much about special teams, and here in the opening two minutes, the block punt, and then Courtney Steven able to pick it up and return it for the touchdown, and the Huskies are on the board, 6-0 on the special teams play. Matthew Sims on for the point after. Placement down, kick up, it's good. Strong start on this rainy night here in DeKalb. The home crowd happy. Northern Illinois behind the special teams play. Jumps out first. Husky seven, Black Knights nothing. Jimmy Ward, now watch Jimmy Ward get up if we can see it. Watch him come back and block here. Watch this block. Right, over. Come on, Jimmy, don't let me down. Boom! Welcome back to DeKalb, Northern Illinois, out to a quick start via the special team. 7-0, Huskies on top on the block punt. 13.43 to go in this first quarter, so Army on the road here in the opening week. Already their back's against the wall. Well, Eddie Faulkner, the running backs coach, is also the special team coordinator. He's an outstanding football player at the University of Wisconsin. I mean, coming out the gate, his first game here as a special teams coordinator for the Huskies. What a way to start for this young guy. Eight block kicks a year ago, and now in the opening two minutes of this 2011 campaign, they have one that results in a touchdown. End over in kick, fielded at the 10 by Maples, and he is stopped shy of a 20. Special teams coverage, Cameron Bell, starting fullback for Northern Illinois on special teams, the first one to hit Maples. Very interesting. Starting fullback makes the play on the kickoff. I mean, there's just, you have, in this day and age with scholarship limitations at 85, you have to play your best players on special teams. Years ago, it was kind of a, you know, 105 guys. You could put, get people game time, game experience. Those days are over. Best players are on the field, special teams, offense, defense, what have you. Malcolm Brown is the slot to the right side. Army opens up at the 18-yard line. Brown in motion. Steelman three-step drop, fires, pass caught. McFarland, the reception, up near the 31. Good yardage, 13 yards and a first down. Let's meet the Husky defense. They are led by Sean Progar. Progar, the Glenview, Illinois native. Returning starter up front. Jefferson, Wells, and Windsor, the down tackles. A linebacking core anchored by Pat Schiller. Bass and Delegal on the outside. And then the secondary, Tommy Davis. He's going to be the leader in that backfield. Returning starter, number four tackler from a season ago. Melvin Stone and Ware. Some youth in that Northern Eye secondary. Yet another penalty against uh, the cadets of West Point. Atypical of a West Point team. First and 15 from the 13-yard line after the penalty. So wipe out the completion to Jared McFarland. Steelman at the line will keep it. Now a pitch for the near side. Good yardage up across the 20. Malcolm Brown pushed out of bounds near the 23-yard line. One of the things in option football that you have to look at, Anthony State, uh, St Stevens, number two from Army, a term called a stock block. In other words, when you get out onto the, yes, when you get out onto that perimeter, watch number two here if we can get a, get a look at him. You're not asking for a knockdown block. You're right there, that's called a stock block. Outside number, shoulder square, and let the back make the cut off of the defender. Steelman ducks in outside, left tackle, picks up the first down. Steelman across the 30. And the Black Knights move the chains for the first time in this opening quarter. 
to run this type of an offense, play after play after play, without going into a huddle, as I mentioned before, you have to have a well-conditioned football team. Steelman coming off that tremendous sophomore campaign. We talked his, talked about his durability, making his 26th consecutive start. He has not missed a snap a game for this Black Knight program the past couple of years. Fresh set of downs at the 32 from the wishbone. Play fake. Steelman rolls out. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Good pressure on the play as Northern Illinois was able to knock down Steelman. Arm is going to have to establish more of a running game if the play action passing game is going to work. Here it is again. A bootleg pass. Number seven, okay, Jared Hasse. He needs to make that block. He needs to take a better angle with that block. Jordan Delegal hitting Steelman on that last play. Second down, and there is nothing for Steelman this time as he is tackled around the line of scrimmage. Allen Baxter, the first one in for Northern Illinois. Now you defend option football, defend wishbone football from the inside out. You take away the fullback game and you give yourself a great chance to be successful on the perimeter later when the fullback, when the ball is detached and it goes out to the perimeter. Northern Illinois is doing an excellent job of defending the wishbone from the inside out, defending option football from the inside out. Passing situation, third down and 10. Receiver left side for the Black Knights is Anthony Stevens. They run it to Hassan straight up the middle. And the fullback does not have much. He crosses the 35. And despite a first down, the Black Knights forced to punt. See, I don't mind that call, though, Sean. As I mentioned before, they like the play action. When you have three men in the backfield, the play action really has a lot more draw on the defense. But for the play action to work, you have to establish the run. Army will send out the punting unit, and this was a disaster for the Knights. Colin Walk, we mentioned, the six-foot senior, had his first punt as a Black Knight blocked. He awaits the snap at the 23. The very dangerous Tommy Davis awaits the return. Low line drive kick. Good one, though. Davis on the back pedal. Fields at the 8. Cuts up to the 10 and is twisted down there. Good coverage by Army. They know about the dangers Tommy Davis possesses. He's lethal at a 52-yarder last year against Ball State, one of the returning weapons for the Huskies. Great open field tackle. Never discard open field tackling. Tackling is a dying art. Faking uh, uh, by running backs, also the same way. You achieve what you emphasize, though. If your special teams guys can get downfield and tackle into the open field, the, in the open field, that's a huge plus. Here comes the Northern Illinois offense led by Chandler Harnish. Over 3,300 yards last season. That was a Husky season record, a record that stood for 47 yards. He can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his legs. First down give is to Jasmine Hopkins as he hops through a little hole over the right side. Let's meet that Husky offense again. It all revolves around the quarterback, Harnish. Hopkins gets the nod at tailback. They go with a three-receiver set. Martell Moore, Willie Clark, and Nathan Palmer. Up front, they are big and they are experienced. Olsen, Pegram, Wedge, Pavlak, and Otis, all returning starters. Second down give over the right side. Close to a first down, good yardage. Sean, you mentioned they are experienced and they are big. They average well, almost 10, 10 pounds per man, over 300 pounds. Here is that undersized Army defense. Traditionally, they're smaller, but they admit this is one of their smaller teams. Zalneritis, Mackey, and Keller up front. Linebacking core with Nesbitt, Watts, and Erzinger in the third and short. Northern Illinois converts, and they'll keep the drive alive. First down as they mark it at the 24-yard line. Again, we heard Dave Doran talk about how he wanted to turn up the tempo this year with this Husky offense. Not change so much the schemes, but just turn it up a little bit. Harnish will hand the ball off. Trying to get to the outside. This is one of the four backs we're expected to see tonight, Akeem Daniels. Daniels able to get outside and get good yardage. Four backs tonight, Bob, for Northern Illinois as they try to replace Chad Spann. 
Hopkins, Akeem Daniels, Jamal Womble, and Leighton Settle. We could see all four by the end of the night. I like Coach Dorn's comment about, you know, not going to change a lot of things. I'm going to try to get the tempo going uh, a little bit quicker. You know, you inherit a program that ha has success. One of the things I think a lot of new coaches make, uh, problem new coaches make, is the fact that they'll try to change too many things. It works. Don't try to change it. Arnish pass incomplete. He was drilled. Bolt Zalnaritis came through and delivered the boom on Harness just as he delivered that football. There you see Rich Ellerson. What a job he has done restoring winning football in his third year at West Point. Seven and six season a year ago. Defeated SMU in the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl trying to duplicate that success this year. Third and short, Harnish on a slant first down across the 40, up to the 42-yard line. Jamison Wells, the redshirt sophomore, hauls it in. Great read there by Harnish. A little bit of a soft corner and a soft safety. Just a quick slant, put the ball right on the money. Good protection. I'm impressed by him. I mean, he has a strong arm. There's that soft corner. Great read. He looked to his left, went through his progression, and ended up throwing the football to the right. That's a lot of confidence in your offensive line. Here's Hopkins with a duck under across the 45. Late marker comes in. Hopkins crawls up to the 47. Looks like a hold coming against one of the uh, front five for Northern Illinois. Holding offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, first down. Wedge to center. Again, I've had a chance to watch this young man over the past couple of years. He's an outstanding football player, an outstanding leader. All conference in basketball, high school captain out of Elkhorn, Wisconsin, 6'4, 309 pounds. And he's pleading his case right now. So after the penalty, this pushes it back to the 34 yard line. So first and 20 now for Chandler Harnish and the Husky offense. Receiver right and left. Harnish from the gun. He will play fake. Roll out to the right, go toward the sideline, pass is caught. And once again, it's Akeem Daniels out of the backfield. Daniels, good story here from uh, Kissimmee, Florida. He was a receiver in high school, has made the transition to that tailback position. And what Doran likes about him is ability to catch the football. Not only catch the football, but find that soft spot in zone coverage. And he settled it equidistant from the defender in front of him and the defender behind him. And that's exactly what you want to do. A lot of times, young guys in zone coverage will drift if the ball's not thrown and actually drift into the coverage. He found that soft spot. He stayed there patiently. Daniels on a short game brings up a third down and seven. Varnish on this drive has completed two of three for 23 yards. Let's see if they can convert on another third down here. In the Black Knights with that rare double eagle flex. We'll talk more about it later. Third down and now a marker comes in from the near side. This play will be blown dead. Ball start, offense, number 88, five-yard penalty, third down. You know, Bob, we're seeing some early mistakes, and that's rare for these two teams. They were two of the least penalized teams last year. Army, fourth in the country, averaging only four penalties per game. Northern Illinois, right behind them, sixth in the country, only six penalties per game. Third and 12 from the 40-yard line. Harnish with trips left from the shotgun. Again, movement up front. Harnish under pressure, avoids the pocket, now turns it up, has some room. He's to midfield, 45, and is pushed out of bounds. Again, Chandler Harnish able to run the football so well. And that time he stepped up in the pocket, felt the pressure, and took it. One of the things about this young guy, we talk about a quarterback, and we talk about athleticism. He is very athletic, and at 6'2", 221 pounds, he's a force to be reckoned with when he takes off with the football. Great high school basketball player. Shows great athleticism on this play. Harnish up to the 31 on a keeper over the left tackle. Chandler Harnish. 3,300 yards total offense last year, 836 on the ground, ran for seven touchdowns. He's on the preseason watch list for the Walter Camp Player of the Year Award, the Davey O'Brien Quarterback Award. This guy is legit. 3.8 grade point average in business administration. I'm sure he studies that playbook, and I'm sure he knows it. 
Second and four as Harnish will run the dive up the middle to Hopkins running through defenders. Hopkins still on his feet. Finally crumbled down at the 21. Tough nose running from Jasmine Hopkins. Sean, this is what we talked about earlier as far as the weight advantage and the size advantage between from the offensive line of Northern Illinois to the Huskies on the defensive side of the football. I mean, that is just coming off the football. As we say, a hat on a hat, bring your legs. Great running by the back, great combination. Look at the offensive numbers from last year, 6,300 yards for Northern Illinois. Now Harney's lost the football and it's picked up by Army. The Black Knights get the turnover that they were looking for as Harnish lost it, and Andrew Rodriguez, one of the captains of the Black Knight defense, recovers it. Big play there for Army's defense. Rain continuing to fall in DeKalb, opening night college football, Northern Illinois on top, 7-0. Andrew Rodriguez with the big play for the Black Knight defense. Let's see if they can capitalize from the 36. Steelman the throw, pass caught. It's a minimum, minimal gain out along the left side. In all candor, Sean, I'm a bit surprised at coming out immediately and throwing the football from, from Army side. I, I think a little more patience, and I'm not second-guessing Coach Ellerson. I, I, I'm just saying that I anticipated that they would establish the run and maybe get the ball out on the perimeter after an inside fake uh, out, of, out of the wishbone. Five yards on the completion to McFarland. Steelman under his center will run the option to the right side. It's a late pitch, and they have the corner up near midfield, up ahead to the 46-yard line. Raymond Maples, good yardage on the option. I anticipated a little bit more of that early. They get into a rhythm with that. You go from pursuit, pursuit, pursuit to assignment defense. It, rather than just turning it loose, you have a specific assignment in, in, in defending wishbone or option football. And that takes the bit out of it, uh, puts a bit in your mouth just a little bit. You actually back a little bit, we'll see what, you know, what, what, your, what your rule is going to do, what your key is going to do. Steelman looking over at his bench for instructions. First and ten, they have penetrated Husky territory for the first time in this opening quarter. Five minutes to go. Steelman on the option will keep it, escapes a defender, 40, and has another first down. There's the elusive running of Brent Steelman getting over that left side. You know, I can't emphasize enough the blocking by the wide receivers, Jaron McFarland on that play. And again, what I mentioned by a stalk block, a stalk block is not to go out there and cut or knock them down. Watch the stalk block here by Jared McFarland right on the perimeter. We're gonna see him right about there, there. Excellent. Shoulder square, outside number football position. That's the way you coach that. Army putting together a nice drive. They trail it 7-0. Our set of downs at the 34-yard line. Again, the wishbone with Hassan at fullback, and it is Hassan who gets the call. They call him Hassan the Assassin back at West Point. Tough nose fullback for Army. Really kind of a tailback body in that fullback position, but, boy, he has that mentality of a fullback where he will run over you. He had an interesting trip coming to West Point. He started out two or three weeks at the United States Air Force Academy. Stayed there a week and realized it wasn't for him. Well, he has a brother, a father, and a grandfather, all military people, Army military people. They said, you know, maybe you're in the wrong place. Little stop in a junior college and back to West Point. West Point certainly happy to have Hassan. Second and five at the 29, three-step drop. There's a slant, Nick Farland makes the catch. First down Army, and boy, McFarland, the sophomore, off to a good start in this opening period. And the Black Knights are in the red zone. You know, not only Grandpa and Dad, how about having a sister had gone to the Military Academy also? His sister Kelsey's a 10, uh, two, uh, 2010 graduate of the Military Academy. Great tradition in that family. Great service to our country. First and 10 at the 15, 3.29 to go, opening period. Army looking for the equalizer. 
And here's a botched play. No one to hand it off to for Steelman. And he'll take his loss as Northern Illinois huh? crashed in. I think everybody got the play except the fullback. You mentioned Hassan. He is the second Army player to rush for 1,000 yards, the second player to do it in his sophomore campaign. Mike Mayweather, the other night to accomplish that. Look at Army's red zone numbers, 88% last year, 15th in the country in the FBS. 36 touchdowns, eight field goals. Second down and nine, again, Steelman audibly. Three down linemen for Northern Illinois. Steelman on a quick pitch, gets it over to Turrentine. He'll go to the five, hurdle into the end zone for the touchdown. That is textbook option football. Textbook option football. Great fake inside, out on the perimeter, pitch, touchdown. Again, I can't say enough about Jared McFarland. Great block. Great, great block. Everybody gets a hat on a hat. You've got a chance. You have a chance. Now the back just makes the cut off of the wide receiver's block. Bam, he's in the end zone. How's that for your first carry as a black knight? Trenton Turrentine, the true freshman out of Keller, Texas, scores on the option. Point after is up, and it's no good. A rare miss by Alex Carlton. Carlton came into this one 54 of 55 in the PATs, but he pushed that one. But it's Turrentine on his first carry as a night, getting into the end zone. 7 6, Huskies on top. Trenton Turrentine's 14-yard touchdown run, capping off a 63-yard drive by Army. Seven plays, 63 yards. Let's go back to that touchdown run, Coach. Well, again, right, right here, this is pure, pure option football in every sense of the word. Great read, great detachment, great pitch on the outside hip. Watch 88 here. Watch 88 here. Never gives up. You know, when you recruit wide receivers to this offense, it's not easy because a lot of times guys want the ball, they want the ball. You have to be the most unselfish wide receiver in the country to play in this offense because you're going to be asked to block an awful lot. What you'll see somewhere down the line is he'll come in like he's going to block, single, go behind him, throw him the ball in a play action. This is Tommy Davis straight up the gut, tripped up as he crossed the 25, falls ahead close to the 27-yard line. That's off to the uh, Northern Illinois band. Just a little thing here, but for the Northern Illinois bands, just saluted the Army football team by playing fight on old Army team. Very, very classy gesture. 7-6 our score, so a little bit of everything in this opening quarter. A rainy day in the state of Illinois. We had about a five-minute delay because of some lightning earlier in the afternoon and then again here in the evening, but the skies have lightened up, if you will. The rain has stopped and we're ready to go. 2.32 to go, first period. 7-6, Huskies on top. Harnish on a quick hitter. This is Hopkins. Stiff arms a defender. 40. He might go. He's to the 40. 35-30. Jackson trying to catch him, and he pushes him out of bounds. Jasmine Hopkins with a nice move, and then he used that speed to break away. What we call a lateral seam in the defense. In other words, he sees just that little bit of light, and he is gone. Good job there. Good job by that offensive uh, total offense. Logan Pegram right across the board. What will happen is, even as, as, as we mentioned before, the movement in the Army defense, the sophistication of the defense, what will happen after a while when you're playing against the size of the offensive line of Northern Illinois, they're going to wear down any defensive front. This is where the coaches, the Northern, uh, excuse me, the Army coaches have to get into a rotation. Get guys out, give them some time, get another guy in there, fresh legs. You mentioned that offensive line for the Huskies, all five starters back. They have a combined 105 starts among that tight knit group. Second down and eight, Harney should play fake. Floats it to the far side. It's caught near the five. Touchdown. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Northern Illinois, and it's Luke Ekis. Outstanding play action. Why does play action work? Because you run the football successfully. There it is. Great fake. He detaches. He comes back. Great job by the receiver, finding that little spot in the zone, settling in that spot, as I mentioned before. 
Scoot. Uh, just a pitch and a catch and then get into the end zone yards after catch. Akeem Daniels, you saw in that replay, throwing that block near the goal line that allowed Ekes to score as he catapulted into the end zone. So Northern Illinois makes it look easy. Three plays, 72 yards. The touchdown pass to Luke Ekes, the redshirt freshman out of the backfield. Watch the play action. The linebackers come up. They respect the run. He gets into a position just beyond the linebackers. Why can't he? Why is he able to do that? Because if you run the footballs I mentioned successfully, those linebackers, they'll step up. Now you find yourself a spot behind them and you're off to the races. Chandler Harnish continues to work his way up the Husky charts as far as records. 53 touchdowns Throughout his career, that places him third on the all-time list. Now, you look at that season from a year ago. They were the first squad to go 8-0 in the MAC, first team in school history to win 11 games. They really took out their frustrations of a conference title loss in the MAC against Fresno State. They beat the Bulldogs 40 to 17. You know, this is a, a team that cruised through the regular season. Then they were shocked in the MAC championship, really upset at that. But boy, they took care of business against Fresno. Well, Jerry Kill, uh, when he came here, uh, mentioned time and time again he gave great credit to Joe Novak. Joe Novak at one point in time, football team was 0-11. 0-11 and came back and built on it and built on it, recruited well. Joe Novak, a hardcore fundamentalist, turned the football team over to Jerry Kill. Jerry Kill didn't skip a beat. And again, as I mentioned before, Coach Dorn is in a position right now to do great things. Not only does he have a good football team, but a good football program. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. This is Raymond Maples at the 15. Big hole, 25-30, and he is shot down. Good special teams tackle by Durante for the Huskies. So now here comes that Army offense again. Well, from time to time, you'll see a football, a football team come up and win a championship. And then the next year struggle and maybe win a championship again or get close to being a championship. That's when you have a good football team. When you have successive seasons with success, that's when you know you have a good football program. And Dave Dorn inherited a good football program, and I'm sure he's going to do great things with it. Army will open up at the 30. They put a receiver left. That's McFarland, receiver right. Wishbone set for the Black Knights with Hassan the fullback. Steelman looks right, throws that way. A little timing pattern, and it's intercepted. Not a good decision there by Steelman as the pass is picked off. Rashawn Melvin with the pick for the Huskies. That is a ball that should have never been thrown. Never been thrown. He'll think about this for a long time before he puts it up like that again. That's the one you want to have back. Credit, credit, Rashawn Melvin. What we call the high point. In other words, a jump ball. I want to take the football at its highest point, at the highest point of my jump. And that comes from timing. And that's why he was able to beat the wide receiver to the football, because he took it at the high point. Great athleticism. Melvin giving up three inches in that matchup with McFarland. He was able to hit that high point, as Bob mentioned, and that's the first turnover in the night against the Black Knights. Now a wide-open receiver as Harnish is right on the money. Martell Moore with the reception as they move into Black Knight territory. I like that call. Come back after, after a turnover and put the football downfield. Martell Moore a long way from San Antonio, Texas, and Earl Warren High School. Don't forget, this guy was a 110 high hurdle champion in Texas. That's saying something. Hopkins with a huge hole up front. Jasmine Hopkins picks up nine yards. What is Martell Moore's distinction from a family standpoint? Randy Moss's cousin. <laughs> That's a good cousin to have, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? It is. It really is. <laughs> Martel Moore, 6'2 junior, 182 pounds, 40 catches last year, over 500 yards. He's their big time receiver. Second and short, Harnish to the right, and some contact, and there comes the marker. Josh Jackson jumping that route a bit too early. Jackson, one of the returning starters, one of the few returners back for Army. He lost his other cornerback, Antoine Aaron, to an injury, and that was certainly a big blow for the Black Knights secondary. Aaron 
was going to be relied on heavily this season. So they're starting some youth. Waverly Washington, Tyler Dixon, Hayden Pass Pierce. Interference. Defense. Throw in the veteran Jackson. He's really going to have to step up this year. Foul. First down. Josh Jackson, one of the more experienced defenders on uh, uh, the Army defense. But this, this is an easy call. Josh gets up and says, no, no, not me. Three receivers left, one right from the shotgun at the 20-yard line. They hand the ball off to Hopkins, trying to spin away, but he just cannot shake free. Good wrap-up on the play by Jarrett Mackey. Sean, what amazes me what football has evolved to. The formations, the motion, and getting the call from the sideline. I mean, you know, 10 years ago, these things were unheard of. One of the teams that really started all of this, getting to play from the sideline while we were over the ball with the Northwestern Wildcats. First quarter is going to come to an end. Northern Illinois using that ground game. Chandler Harnish is thrown for a touchdown as well, plus the special teams with seven. Huskies lead after one. Four Good start to the debut for Dave Dorn for Northern Illinois. Longtime assistant coach, spent the past five years as the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin. He knows a thing or two about defense, Bob, and apparently he knows a thing or two about offense. Very spread attack in that uh, first quarter. 171 yards in the opening quarter for Northern Illinois. 13 on ground plays, five through the air. Harnish has hit on four of five. Looking toward the front of the end zone. That one falls short, trying to hit Anthony Johnson. Harnish, four of six, 53 yards in that opening period. I can't, I, it's really amazing. This is one of the most well coached offensive lines that I've seen in the past couple of years. Actually, last year and this year yet again. And the thing is, with an offensive lineman playing together, playing side by side over a given period of time, is such a huge advantage. Third and nine inside the red zone at the 19. Trips left, receiver right, movement up front. No marker, though. Harnish fades it toward the end zone, and it is caught. Nathan Palmer, but a late marker came in. There was movement at the line of scrimmage, and let's see if it was enticed or not. We saw Army creep over, but let's see if one of the uh, big linemen flinched to cause it. Josh Jackson says they move. Offside. No, Defense. Jackson wins the decline. Touchdown, Touchdown will stand, and it's Nathan Palmer with the reception. This is all about protection. It's a great route. Watch these big guys set back. Chandler Harness, great confidence in that offensive line. A great route, although he gets turned around. And, you know, wide receiver coaches do that all the time. They'll have a young guy run in one direction, throw the ball to his backside, have him come around and adjust. Outstanding job of doing that. That's great focus. You know, I always said when I coached tight ends, you don't catch the football with your hands. You catch the football with your eyes. He never lost focus on the football. Matthew Sims adds the point after. Chandler Harnish with his second touchdown pass of the night. Just 10 seconds into the second period, the Huskies up the ante. Northern Illinois 21, Army 6 here in decal. You know, they talk about quarterbacks having happy feet. In other words, getting back there, jumping around here, jumping around there. That's not Harnish at all. And why he's able to do that, it's because of confidence. He sets his feet. His shoulders are square. Watch that offensive line. Look at this. Textbook. Textbook. And, I mean, that was almost a casual throw by Chandler Harnish. He knows. He knows he's not going to be threatened. And Nathan, that, that is fun to watch. Nathan Palmer, redshirt senior, in his final go-around has had a good career here in DeKalb. Last year, 29 catches, over 300 yards, caught six touchdowns. See that big NIU Husky? His name is Diesel. The Diesel. The Diesel. Call. I had a chance to meet him earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> the Diesel staying dry tonight. I told him you'd get him some air time. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Harnish so far, 5 of 7, 72 yards through the air. He is one cool customer. Four carries, 24 yards on the ground as well. Army in some trouble on the road. 21-6, Huskies on top. The shallow kick, this will bounce. Maples picks it up at the 15, up ahead to the 20. Is taken down low at the 25-yard line. Johnny Faustin 
and on the stop on the special teams play. Here's the deal with this offense. Any type of, of option offense, whether it be wishbone, split backs, what have you, is not a catch-up come from behind offense. It's an offense that requires a lot of patience, and then every now and then to throw the ball downfield off of play action. I think Army got a little bit out of sync running the foot, uh, throwing the football early. This is the ball control team. 33 minutes time of possession each game. They love to pound the football at you. And as you mentioned, this is a team designed to work with the lead. From the 27, Steelman keeps it. Tough running by the quarterback across the 30 up to the 33. Talking with Trent Steelman this week, this is the freshest he has felt in his three years at West Point. He sat out spring ball this year. He actually tore his labrum in his non-throwing shoulder, played through the pain last season, had surgery, sat out spring ball, and now he comes into this new season refreshed, ready to go. Has started every single football game since arriving at West Point. There aren't a lot of college quarterbacks that can say that. Second down and four from the 33. Steelman on a pitch. Bounces away from Turrentine. It's loose, and it's picked up by the Huskies. Bad pitch. Here comes a marker late. And the Black Knights with their second turnover of the game. That's on Steelman right there. That is an errant pitch. You want to try to get that football to the far shoulder of the running back and let him run, basically almost run into the football. After the play, personal foul, late hit on the offense, number 88. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Here's the fumble as uh, Steelman with the bad pitch Watch trying pitch. to get it to Turrentine. Uh, I, right now as I look at that again, I can't put all that on Steelman. Turrentine may have looked up just a bit, bit too soon. This would be a tough call. Let's see it from this side. Here we go. Uh, I give that a 50-50. Fumble recovered by Demetrius Stone. It's one of the shortcomings of this offense. I mean, you're dealing that football, you're pitching it, and, and that, and, uh, you know, in Tarantine, uh, being a freshman coming in and 5'9", uh, 209 pounds, uh, you know, he's got to get into that rhythm, get into that rhythm. Harnish in Northern Illinois already on top by 15. They will keep it on the ground. Harnish on a keeper, not much there. Reggie Nesbitt cut off the outside, and he Brought the elusive quarterback down, short pickup. When you're under man from a size standpoint on defense, you have to have great pursuit. You have to you have to take the element that you have, which is speed, and you have to have 11 of those gold helmets on that ball carrier every single time. Two receivers split right. That's Martell Moore to the right side. This is Harney going to give up the middle to Hopkins. Jasmine Hopkins stretches the ball up to the six. Tackled by Steven Erzinger, and he's the leader of this defensive unit. 6'2", senior, Houston, Texas native. He was named the legacy captain. This is a neat tradition at Army where the outgoing class, last year's seniors toward the end of the season, name a captain that they feel will carry on that Army tradition, and they thought Erzinger was the right guy. What an honor. I mean, what an honor. Red zone offense, two for two, a couple of touchdowns so far tonight. They're looking for a third here. 21-6, Huskies on top. Empty backfield, Hakeem Daniels in motion. They get it to Daniels near the pylon, touchdown. Harnish with his third touchdown pass. Daniels hauls it in. The football could, at that point could be thrown to one place, and that's the far shoulder of the wide receiver. And that's exactly where Harnish threw the football. The far shoulder of the wide receiver between the wide receiver and the out-of-bounds line. I mean, he's got all the throws. He's a complete quarterback. He's got touch. He can throw the, you know, the, the quick hitches, throws the ball down, feel well, does a great job. He, th this young guy is something special. Matthew Sims on for the point after. Placement down, kick is up, and it is good. Army in some serious trouble here in the season opener. Huskies 28-6, Harnish another touchdown. Akeem Daniels with the score.
not your typical half of Army football. Mistakes and penalties costing the Black Knights here in this first half. And as a result, head coach Rich Ellerson in some serious trouble. Last year, a plus 16, third in the FBS tonight, a minus one, plus you throw in that block punt. Early penalties as well. And like I said, we're just not used to seeing this. 28-6, Huskies on top. A block punt for a touchdown. That last score set up on the short field on the fumble on the option. Now Army must regroup as they try to get back in it in an early hole. Very shallow kick. This will bounce at the 20. Maples picks it up, 25. Trying to get to that short side, and he is roped out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Shaw, this will be a critical set of downs for Army. They have to really establish, get that running game, get the ball out on the perimeter. Don't be afraid to pitch the football because you had an errant pitch before. Do the things that you do well. Do the things that you are coached to do. Once you start to get out of sync and try to do some other types of things or some, you know, a little bit of change here, a little bit of change there, it doesn't work. And the other thing is patience. Patience, patience is critical for this wishbone offense. And, that, and that's what you have to sell the young guys. And you never stop. You know, you know who your biggest recruiting job as a football coach? Recruiting the guys on your own team to believe in what you do. Believe in the system. First down give. Second back through. This is Maples. Not much there. Following the lead block of his fullback, Maples crosses the 30. If Army could get into a, a, either a, a, the situation on this down, a third and short, I mean like a third and short and go to a play action and I take a chance of throwing the ball downfield. Anthony Stevens split to the top. David Brooks, the team's leading receiver from a year ago, split left. Steelman on the option, forced to pitch it. Turrentine near the side is pushed out of bounds, catapulted out by Jamal Bass. You know, I talked early, defensive football is reaction football. When you run against traditional offenses, when you're running against an option offense, it is no longer just pursuit, pursuit. It becomes assignment defense. And I will tell you, Northern Illinois right now, they're assignments. They've done a marvelous job. Who has the pitch? Who has the dive? Who has the quarterback? And then plus play pass coverage. Current time was able to get enough for a first down there. So Army has it at the 39 yard line. 28 6. Huskies with the lead early in the second quarter. Again, it's Turrentine, and he runs into the arms of Sean Progar. Progar, leader up front, lone returning starter on that defensive line. 39 tackles a season ago, has 10 sacks throughout his successful career. Great push that time by the. Husky defensive line coming pad under pad, playing with leverage. Again, Steelman looking over toward his coaches. That young offensive line, Bisgard, Bailey, Kime, Allen, and Kelly, although Wilson is in there at times as well so far in this first half. Second down play, Steelman nearly dropped the snap. Straight drop under pressure, throws off his back foot, and he simply threw that one away. Totally under duress. Uh, no fake whatsoever, no draw on the play action. Almost ends up basically a straight drop back. Again, I mentioned this before. Those offensive linemen, they, they, as you watch this game, they will get into their three-point stance. They will be down in the three-point stance, look to the sideline with everybody else. After a while, that wears on an offensive lineman. There There's it is right there. Here's one of those third and longs you were talking about. Third and seven for Army. Student body making some noise for the Huskies. Steelman swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Allen Baxter, what a half a football for Baxter from his defensive end position. Well, this is just what I mentioned. Baxter on this play, his assignment was Steelman. And he stayed disciplined, he stayed with his assignment, and he made the play. You're going to see it right here. Steelman obviously has quarterback on, on this in this defense. Bamo, good job of coming down. They had a man on the quarterback, a man on the fullback, and a man on the pitch. That's the way to defend option football. Colin Walk awaiting the kick at the 30-yard line. Huskies are going to set up the return as he angles it away from Tommy Davis. Pretty good job there by Walk on the punt as he boots it out. 
at the 18-yard line as we're going to say that went out of bounds. So here comes that high-octane Northern Illinois offense. Huskies in control, 10.09 to go, 28-6. Northern Iowa on top. DeKalb, Illinois, here on a Saturday night in the Midwest. A rainy day and evening here, but the rain has stopped. Northern Illinois taking advantage of that huge, massive offensive line. There you see the difference. 70 pounds. Uh, that, I mean, after a while, that would just wear on you. Harnish has more open, but he overshot him incomplete. More had gotten behind the secondary, but a rare misfire from Chandler Harnish. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, about being a West Point cadet football player. Remember one thing, you have to do all the things that all the other cadets are involved in, and much of that is physical training, whether it be in, in, in the summertime going out to an Army base, and that plus the rigors of football, the weightlifting, the training, and all of those things. You have to possess great character to wear that full helmet. Here's Harnish getting free. Chandler Harnish on the keeper down the sideline, steps out of bounds. It's a big run from Harnish, and again, Northern Illinois just getting yards and chunks right now. I, I, I can't say enough about, about Harnish. Not only his ability to throw the football, but make good decisions, get his team in the right play. Good fake inside, now he takes the football to the outside. Step out, Chandler. Good decision. <laughs> He'll be ready for the NFL with that move. New quarterback in there, Jordan Lynch, giving Harnish maybe a breather after that long run. Lynch is a uh, redshirt sophomore. Chicago, Illinois native. Grew up a Husky fan, and now he's getting to follow in the footsteps of Chandler Harnish. That's a pretty good guy to learn from. Oh, I don't think there's any question. If you've met Chandler Harnish, I'm sure he tutors Lynch. I'm sure he's one of those guys that is a mentor. Chandler Harnish, you meet this young man, I mean, he has such a presence. Lynch operating from the shotgun. Daniels in the backfield. This is Akeem Daniels through a hole into the secondary and another Northern Illinois first down. 12-yard run. I never take this for granted. Just a smooth, smooth handoff. Inside arm up by, by, by the running back. Putting the football directly in the midsection. The full, the full back locks up on the football. Great mechanics by Lynch. Great mechanics for a young guy. Here is in a situation directing a little bit of traffic. That'll impress the coaches. Low snap. Lynch on a quarterback keeper all the way, trying to get it to the outside. Ducks inside the 20. Good cutback move by Lynch. He gets inside the Army red zone, and we have a Black Knight injured in the backfield. West Point's defense has just been on the field so long. They are, they are just getting worn down. A halftime break. Come out, come out with fresh legs, maybe a couple of new wrinkles of that. But for right now, uh, again, they've did, the offense has, has not had a lot of time of possession. The defense has been on the field. And after a while, you start getting beat up a little bit, you start getting tired. As a result, you see plays like that where, you know, just a basic inside running play that uh, is hard to defend. Well, the news getting even worse now for Army. Jarrett Mackey is the injured Black Knight. Rich Ellerson out to, to look at Mackey, the uh, junior, only returning starter back on that defensive line. Started all 13 games last year. Injury timeout from DeKalb, 28-6. Huskies on top. You see the Army trainers looking at Jarrett Mackey. Started all 13 games last year in that bandit position, part of the double eagle flex for Army. And again, a guy they can ill afford to lose as they continue to work on him. You know, coming off the field, Josh Jackson uh, showing great concern for his teammate. A.J. Mackey, Jarrett Mackey, and Josh Jackson have been teammates in football since the sixth grade. And all three of them, I mean, if you think back to your sixth grade days, who, as they say, who would have known? And so, you know, it's not only just a great loss, obviously a football loss, not to have him on the field, but great concern by, by uh, Josh and obviously A.J. Mackey, uh, Jarrett's brother. It's like they're working on his left knee, so we'll keep an eye on Mackey. 
Chandler Harnish back in there for Northern Illinois on this third down play. Third and three from the 18-yard line. 28-6, Huskies on top. Three receivers left. Harnish looks right, zips it underneath. Martell Moore, first down, 10. He's to the five. Moore stretching ahead, and he's finally brought down. Little John finally able to wrestle down Martell Moore. First and goal, Huskies. Here's Chandler Harnish uh, under duress. And quarterbacks have that sixth sense. Watch to his backside. He hangs in there. Just in time gets the football away. Great move by Martell Moore. Goes to the outside and cuts back inside. Gets the ball down to the one-yard line. Husky score. Harnish on the quarterback keeper. Able to stretch the football across. He's thrown for three. Now he adds a running one to his arsenal tonight. 34-6. Northern Illinois. That is a great push and great leg drive by Chandler Harnish. Like they use the quick snap. As Harnish able to go in from a yard out, Matthew Sims has been busy. He splits the uprights. Chandler Harnish, six carries, 67 yards, a touchdown. Seven of ten throwing the ball for 95 yards and three touchdowns. Let's say the uh, preseason candidate for that uh, long list of awards off to a good start here tonight in front of the home crowd. Chandler Hart, 67 yards rushing, 95 yards passing, a total of 162 yards, and we've got a lot of football here to play yet. You know, statistics are great, and, and they really are indicative of the success that he's had on the field today. But one of the things we have to really give a lot of attention to, he gets his, he gets his team into the right play. When he's an extension of the coach out on the field. I've seen very few errant plays, very few bad audible calls. Getting your team into the right play. And that, again, as I mentioned, is an extension of the coach on the field. Mention Harnish. Pursuing a master's in business. He was a Victor Scholar at 3.7 GPA. And you look at all the different awards that he is up for this season. The Walter Camp. Davey O'Brien, the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm, the Maxwell Award. He has dominated the back the last three years. End over ring kick. This will be Raymond Maples at the 10. Maples to the 20, runs into his own man, and spins ahead close to the 29-yard line. Ran into his own blocker, and Maples with a return of 19 yards, and now the Army offense down 35-6. 7.23 to go in this first half. What do they need to do, Bob, to, to get some consistent first downs on this defense? Well, one of the things I think you, you have to take a shot downfield here soon. And, and you know, the, the problem is with the score being 35-6, to 6, are, you, are these secondary defenders and the inside linebackers really going to bite on play action? You're going to have to come out with something to get the quarterback out into the flat, give him a run-pass option. The opportunity to throw the football or run the football, get him out there, use his athleticism. Turrentine and Maples are the two backs behind Hassan, the fullback up ahead. Not much there, tripped up by Joe Windsor. You know, Sean, it, it, as simple as it may sound, you can only do offensively what you are trained and what you know how to do. When you start to uh, get out of the things that have made you good in the past, that is just a, a, a recipe for failure. But I will tell you this, I, Army, they will play as hard right down to the whistle as they did in the opening series of the game. They are, as I mentioned before, they are relentless. This is Malcolm Brown picking up a nice downfield block. Clearing the way that time for the Black Knight running back was Raymond Maples, so one slot back helping the other as Brown picks up good yardage. You will never see, never see an Army football player loaf on the field. It's not part of their nature. See Brown's numbers from a year ago. A couple of touchdowns as a receiver. They use those slot backs effectively in the offense. Maples and Brown, both very good receivers out of the backfield. First down and 10 from their own 44-yard line. Steelman will give it to Jared Hassan. Hassan runs into a sea of red 
meeting him head on over that left guard spot was Jason Meehan. You talk about a defensive lineman. What a defensive lineman wants to do, he wants to get pad under pad. Low man wins. I don't care what level of football it is. Keep your legs moving, stay stout, create a new line of scrimmage, and force that back not to be able to gain yards at the point of attack. If he's going to gain yards, bounce it out and get to the outside, and then let the pursuit come in. McFarland receiver left, Stevens to the top of the field. Malcolm Brown is the slot left. John Crusetti has checked in. He lines up next to Hassan. Brown in motion. Steelman quick drop. Pass is caught. It's McFarland again. He's had a solid half receiving the football. If there's been a, a bright spot on that Army offense, I think you'd have to say it's the play of the sophomore, Jared McFarland, who just had a fabulous spring. Good fall camp has worked himself into that starting rotation using that size of his 6'5 sophomore. He is an impressive athlete. Third down and four, the ball sniffing midfield. Approaching the five minute mark of the second quarter, a game dominated by the Huskies, 35-6, Northern Illinois. Steelman will hand the ball off, Crusetti with a first down carry and then some. John Crusetti up ahead to the 30 yard line. They call Crusetti the Swiss Army knife because he does so much for this Black Knight team. He returns kicks. He can catch the football. He's a baseball player at West Point. He does it all. Great job of keeping his feet moving. That's the whole deal. You're a running back. I don't care what the situation is. You keep your feet moving, you've got a chance. First down give over the left tackle up to the 26 yard line. This, this is uh, more typical of Army football right here. Coming off the football, getting a hat on a hat, let the back make the cut. Case you're just joining us, Northern Illinois special team set the tone, blocking a punt in the first two minutes of the game, returning it for a touchdown. Since then, two Army turnovers resulting in 14 Husky points. Chandler Harnish has thrown for three scores. Black Knights have got to feel like they've walked into a trap here in Illinois tonight. Second and five, Steelman. Options to the right. Good hole opens up, and he'll pick up the first down. Over that right side, good blocking there by Joe Bailey and Derek Bisgard. Great read there by Steelman. Had a chance to pitch the football, saw that just that little seam, that lateral seam in the defense, accelerated. Now it looks like Northern Illinois will call a timeout. Well, they, have, they want to regroup. You start thinking about, you know, a couple of maybe a new wrinkles within the framework of the option offense that Army runs. This is where, you know, people understand. That, you know, people talk about halftime adjustments. Great coaching staffs make adjustments through the course of the game. And, and it's not until the half to come out for the adjustments. It's continuous, the communication from the field, communication to, from the booth to the field, critical. That's why, you know, you have those coaches up there. They're conferring with the coaches on the sideline, making adjustments throughout the course of the game. See Dave Dorn, Rich Ellerson, the two coaches. Ellerson, in his 12th year of coaching, he was the 36th head coach in the Army history back in December of 2008 has done a good job. He kept mentioning bringing back winning football to West Point. Two year record of 12 and 13 coming off that seven and six season a year ago. If you go to his stops along the head coaching path, eight years at Cal Poly, his team's finished in the top 25 in the last four years in the FCS. 1977 graduate of Hawaii. That Army to that first winning season since 96 and the 16 to 14 victory over June Jones in that high powered SMU offense last year. I can't imagine a greater honor in all of coaching than to say I'm the head football coach at the United States Military Academy. I can't imagine a greater honor. His father and two brothers, members of the long gray line at Army. First down give after the timeout. It's a give to the fullback, Hassan, and he is swallowed up. Been a tough go. Inside for the Black Knights. Not much there. Second and ten. Plenty of time. 3.33 to go here until halftime. Northern Illinois rotating some fresh bodies in that defensive unit. 
big lead, getting some of the younger guys some game experience. Schiller and Bass still the anchors of that linebacking core. It's a quick pitch out to the left, off the option. Raymond Maples pushed out of bounds by Tommy Davis. You know, there are three phases to option football when you have three backs in the backfield. The dive, the pitch, and the quarterback keep. And they have to be executed in, in, in total coordination for that offense to be successful. The defense takes away one of those portions. The other portion of that, uh, of that option football has to take its place. Got to believe this is four down territory for Army. Third and four, it's Maples. He's hit by Schiller. Keeps the legs churning, and this will all depend on the spot, Bob, but it's going to be very close. Good power running by Raymond Maples. He met contact and surged past it. Known to be one of the more explosive people on the on the Army football team when it comes to having the football in their yard. Nice job by that young man. 6'1", 200-pound uh, sophomore. Former high school captain are as most of these young men on this football team. They are just shy, so fourth and less than a yard. Army likes to roll the die. 14 of 19 a year ago. Fourth and less than a yard. Steelman in under his center kind. Delivers a hard count, keeps it himself, picks up the first down. Good, Good surge. surge by Kime. Exactly. Good surge by that offensive line. It's a matter of being pad under pad. Kime does a nice job. He's pad under pad. Excellent job. Good push. That gives you a little, you know, that it's a little more momentum, a little confidence. Time able to get underneath the pads of Kyle Jenkins, who was lined up over the nose spot that last play. So a fresh set of downs, first and goal, Army, inside two minutes to go. Trying to get something to build upon for the second half. They give the ball to Turrentine, and he is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Good play made defensively, Jordan Delegal. I think if Turrentine stays with the original point of attack, he may have himself a, a touchdown. Kind of bounced it a little bit to the outside. He has to be a little more patient. Delegal, a Juco All-American at Joliet Junior College. 38 tackles, second on the team last year as the weak side linebacker in on that last play. Second and goal. Steelman taking his time at the six. He'll run the option to the short side. Pitches it to Turrentine, looking for his second touchdown of the night. And he is pushed out just shy of the goal line. Knocked out of bounds by Jamal Bass. Jamal Bass lowers his shoulder and brings it. Brings his legs. Bammo. Good job. Excellent job. Third and goal. Clock stop. Minute three to go until half. Turn time will mature and grow. I mean, it, 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 even as, as, it, in this series. Receiver right and left, third and goal. Steelman is hit just as he got ready to pitch it. The ball caught free. Steelman fighting for it. Still no word from the official. Northern Illinois football. That, Sean, is a heartbreaker. Take that football 80 yards down the field and end up with a turnover inside the five-yard line. That is tough duty. Steelman was getting ready to pitch it, Bob, when Baxter delivered the hit. He started to pitch it and realized Baxter was, was in harm's way and tried to bring the football back into, uh, uh, back into a safe position. Jimmy Ward recovered it. He's the uh, backup free safety for Northern Illinois. It was Ward who was able to reach it and grab it away from Steelman. But how about the first half from Allen Baxter, the reserve defensive end? He's been in on a number of plays. This Northern Illinois defense has played outstanding football. And again, you're playing against a deceptive offense, uh, assignment football, uh, not reaction football, very well coached, especially to play an option. You never want to play an option team in the first game of the year. You never want to do it because you have to devote so much time to it, and there really is no carryover through the rest of the season. It's tough duty, well coached team. Chandler Harnish will be content to take a knee close to 300 yards offense for the Huskies in this first half. 283 yards officially, 188 rushing, 95 through the air. Harnish has accounted for four of their touchdowns, three throwing, one running. The high offensive power that we expected certainly living up to its name here 
after the first 30 minutes. Uh, the credit Jay Neiman to the defensive coordinator and safeties coach for Northern Illinois. He's done a magnificent job of preparing this defense. But Sean, I take it back right back to the uh, uh, early on in the game, the block punt in my eyes, in my heart of hearts, set the, set the temple for this football game. The rain has not slowed down Northern Illinois. Huskies lead it at the break, 35-6. You're watching college football on ESPN3. Half underway, good deep end over ring kick. This will be Davis four yards deep in the end zone and he wisely takes a knee. Good strong kick by Eric Osteen. Handling the kickoff duties for Army. Now talk about turnover. Army needs a stop here. Army needs a turnover. Army needs to strike here. Get into the end zone. Be patient. You've got a whole half of football left. You have to play great defense. Northern Illinois right now, the one thing they have to do is play the offense that has put the uh, 35 points on the board. Don't get conservative. Stay in a rhythm. Stay focused. Keep doing the things you were doing successfully in the first half. Chandler Harnish, big first half, 7 of 10, 95 yards, three touchdowns. He rushed for another from the shotgun. He hands it to Hopkins. He is at giving ground. Hopkins able to slip free, turn a negative gain into some positive yardage. Good tough run by Hopkins. Good balance as he crosses the 25 to the 26-yard line. I mean, that is strictly an effort run. I talked about it earlier. Watch any great running back. Watch their feet. They never stop. If your feet keep moving as a running back, you're going to give yourself a chance and also be your own best blocker. What do I mean by that? As you, you don't have somebody in front of you, a defender comes, lower your shoulder. Be your own best blocker. Harnish rolls out, throws underneath his intended target. Shot it behind Nathan Palmer, bringing up a third down. You mentioned Hopkins, Jasmine making his first start for Northern Illinois. Big shoes to fill. Chad Spann rushed for over 1,300 yards here in DeKalb last year. 22 touchdowns. Good night for Hopkins. Seven carries, 92 yards. Junior College All-American out of Fort Scott uh, Community College. Black Knights need to stop. Third and two for Chandler Harnish. Knights will rush for Harnish straight drop. First down up ahead, 35 up to the 37 yard line. Passes caught, that's Anthony Johnson. Make it seven for seven on third downs in this game for Northern Illinois. Harnish has done a good job of identifying a soft corner and just taking what the defense gets. Just that little hook, three, four yards and depend upon yards, uh, yards after catch. And what that amounts to, Sean is almost like an elongated handoff, so to speak. Good job by the uh, by the West Point front right there, getting a good push, getting in good pursuit, putting Northern in second and ten. That's what they have to keep. They got to force a punt, get the football back. Clayton Keller, the defensive end, did not play last year. Linebacker moved to the end spot in on that last stop of Harnish. Opening drive of the second half, Huskies big, 35-6, second and ten. Harnish, he will fake the handoff under pressure, throws off his back foot, and it's intercepted. Great read on the ball by Army's Tyler Dixon, and the Black Knights get the turnover they needed. Outstanding defensive job now from Harnish's standpoint. Young man, don't throw the football off that back foot that way. You've been around a little bit too long. Take the sack if you have to. See it right here. Under duress, defenders in his face. Good job of stepping up, balls thrown into double coverage. Outstanding job by the, uh, Tyler Dixon. Good job of stepping up, recognizing, and not biting. Hayden Pierce was the safety on a blitz who forced Harnish to throw that ball before he wanted to. So Army with their best starting position of the night. They give it to Jared Hassan. They'd love to see their fullback get going. Hassan has had a tough night, tough yardage in between the tackles. He gets three on first down. The fullback game goes in option football. Everything else falls into place. Army going with the no huddle. They have went with this look all night. Army has changed centers as well. Will Wilson is in there. We saw Matt Keim in the first half, but now it's Wilson manning the center position, the 6'2", 285-pounder from Great Falls, Virginia. Steelman wants to option, pitches it to Malcolm Brown, and he is tied up right away. Pat Schiller grew up a huge Husky fan. Now playing here at Northern Illinois. Good to see him back from an injury, and it was Schiller who stretched out the option. This is all about pursuit. What do I mean by pursuit? 
a relentless, a relentless charge to the football by every Husky football player. Pat Schiller played at Geneva High School. He played for Rob Wasinski. Rob was an outstanding inside linebacker here at Northern Illinois in the mid 80s. Steelman ducks it in. He'll cut it up to the 40 yard line. Tripped up. Not much there. Joe Windsor able to stretch a paw out. Slowed down Steelman. And now fourth down for Rich Ellerson and the Knights. Down big. Got to imagine they're going to go for it here. And it looks like they're lined up, ready to go. Absolutely. Good call. Crowd making some noise here on a rainy night in DeKalb. Mentioned earlier in the first half how Army loves to roll the die. Fourth and four from the 40. Receiver right and left from the wishbone. Steelman a quick pitch. This is Crusetti with it, and he's not going to get there. Good pursuit by the defense. Leading the charge once again, Jordan Delegal. Black Knights turned away on fourth down. 11.45 to go, third quarter. Husky still in control, 35-6. So the turnover does not hurt Northern Illinois. Army turned away on fourth down. The Huskies will get the football right back at their own 38-yard line. Rainy night here in DeKalb. It's the opener for both these teams, Northern Illinois and Army. Black Knights will have their home opener next Saturday at Mikey Stadium as they welcome San Diego State to town, the Aztecs. Fresh off a third place finish in the Mountain West a year ago. Here's Harnish on first down under pressure. And there's the legacy captain, Erzinger, bringing down Harnish back at the 32-yard line. Erzinger able to corral the elusive quarterback that time. Erzinger, a three-year starter of Lamar High School in Houston, Texas. Talk about great high school football tradition. Watch him come up here. And you know what he does? He, he makes the tackle to the outside shoulder because his help is in to the inside. If he, may, if he misses the tackle, he diverts the running back, the quarterback, Harnish back to the inside. If he goes to the outside shoulder and misses, Harnish is still running. Boy, even on a botched play, Northern Illinois is able to pick up good yardage. Chandler Harnish turned. Nobody was to hand it off to, and so he quickly tucked it in and ducked inside and found a huge hole. And Harnish will go to the sidelines as Jordan Lynch is back out there. So good improvising by the uh, senior Harnish. That was the fake to no one. <laughs> it worked. Lynch, quick zap over the middle on a slant pattern, threw it a bit low, incomplete. Tried to hit Anthony Johnson. Mentioned Lynch. He's a local kid from Chicago. Last year, four of six, 13 yards. More known for his running. He had a 90-yard run last year in the win against Buffalo. That was the longest run ever by a quarterback in Northern Illinois history. He's built like a linebacker. I'll bet you he is one tough kid. Second and 10. Here is his running ability as he's tripped up at the 45. Falls ahead to the 43. Late marker comes shooting in. Waverly Washington in on that stop for Army. Remember Washington filling in Holy for the injured Antoine offense, Aaron. Number 68. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Keith Otis, the right tackle. The guilty party. <laughs> I love watching a, a football player plead his case. Now he's 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 you know he's telling Pavlak Pavlak, excuse me, uh, Pollock, uh, that wasn't me. That didn't happen to me. Pollock, I know they, that happened to me a couple games ago. What are these guys doing? <laughs> Gotta love those big guys up front, and they are fun to be around. Otis Pavlak, Wedge, Pegram, Olson, they have done the job tonight. That experienced massive front line for Northern Illinois. Second and 18, they set up the middle screen. Pass is caught out of the backfield near midfield. Breaking ahead to the 45. All the way to the 40. This is Jamal Rumble, and he's going to go for the touchdown. 58 yards on the screen. The patience of Harnish set that all up. I will tell you this. I sincerely believe the most difficult play to choreograph in all of football is a screen pass. And they do it here just magnificently. A hat on a hat, a block on a block. Everybody doing their job, the back breaking a block. Yet another good block. Get the football in your other hand, son. Don't block behind the ball carrier. That could have been close. 
outstanding job of setting up that screen play. 58-yard screen. Harnish with his fourth touchdown of the night. Jamal Womble, the number three back with the reception. Point after is up for Matthew Sims, and it's good. Northern Illinois continues with their home opener in a big way. Nathan Palmer fired up. Womble doing a little dance. 42-6, Huskies. Senior punter Colin Walk has pinned Northern Illinois deep in their own end. Chandler Harnish will start this drive from the shotgun in his end zone. First down give is up the middle. A little draw action over the left side close to the 10-yard line. Good surge by that offensive line, Logan Pegram and Trevor Wilson on that left side. Hopkins, the ball carrier. Sean, how long did he leave uh, Harnish in this game? You're the coach, you tell me. Six more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Big hole, Hopkins into the secondary. Hopkins still on his feet, dragging Army defenders with him, finally corralled. Boy, good strong running by Hopkins. That'll put him over 100 yards tonight. Talk about elusive. 5'9", 181 pounds. Penalty marker in before the snap. Jasmine Hopkins in his first game in that starting backfield. Nine carries, 117 yards. All of the running backs have made plays. We've seen Daniels catching the ball. Illegal substitution. Defense, number 75, five-yard penalty, first down. Womble, we saw him on that screen play a few moments ago with a long touchdown. So, again, Northern Illinois knew they had depth, and they're using everybody back there tonight. So nothing, nothing. Uh, try as you may in practice. Try as you may to create game situations. There's nothing like game time experience. After the penalty, first and five, Harnish wants to throw, has all sorts of time, wants the home run. Deep downfield, Johnson makes an adjustment incomplete. Good jo coverage by Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson, excellent job. Stride for stride. Didn't start to get to look back until uh, the wide receiver starts to look back. I mean, just uh, excellent job. Here it is right here. Key is Jackson turned his head, looked for the ball. There's a play up the middle. Good yardage up across the 35, close to the 40. Another first down, it looks like, for Northern Illinois. Hopkins with 10 more. This is just right now. It is grinded out football. Those offensive linemen, they love this. They love it. Hopkins, the ball carrier, across the 40, up ahead to the 42-yard line. Army right. does a better job closing the gap that time. By nature, offensive linemen want to drive block. They want to run block. Little, you know, pass protection's nice every now and then. So do I should say every now and then. But, I mean, you show me an offensive lineman that loves the game. And you say, you know what, let's run the football. Northern Illinois running that up-tempo offense. A little bit different from a year ago. In motion, they give it to the slot in motion. Good yardage up near midfield. Coming across the field was Willie Clark. Clark's the team's leading receiver from a year ago. Able to get another first down, eight-yard run. Great cut. It's difficult to make a cut when your shoulders are perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Uh, any back, any ball carrier, you want your shoulders flat to the line of scrimmage and then make a cut. You, your shoulders are perpendicular. You make that cut. That shows outstanding athleticism. One of the nation's leading ground games back at it again tonight in this new year. Hopkins trying to get away, but he cannot. Holt Zalneritis. In on the stop, along with some help from Erzinger as they bring down Hopkins, loss of a yard. Mentioned Erzinger, 25 consecutive starts. The Rover linebacker. Second down and 12. Actually, they say he lost two on the play. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Northern Illinois, big. Harnish, too tall. Tried to find a little hitch pattern on the near side. Jamison Wells, the intended target. Good coverage there by the outside linebacker. Corey Watts into the coverage for Army. We mentioned Erzinger and, and the leader he is, the legacy captain. Last year, the middle linebacker was Steven Anderson, and he was a very physical force in the middle. 
really put a lot of pressure on Erzinger to, to drop off into pass coverage. But this year with a more athletic bunch at linebacking core, they're really trying to hope that frees up Erzinger to be more athletic and, and patrol the middle. Little swing pass and a big hit out of bounds delivered, but good yardage on the play to Akeem Daniels. He paid the price. So this is a well-executed play. And as I mentioned before, a play like this is basically an elongated handoff. Get the ball carrier out in the flat. Very, very safe. Nice touch. Don't take that for granted. Got a big offensive lineman leading the charge down the field. 18-yard completion to Daniels. Now he'll get a try on the ground. Daniels knifes ahead to the 30, to the 29. Going back to that Army defense, Bob, again, Anderson, a big hole to fill in the middle, and then the all-time leading sacker and tackles for loss category, Josh McNary, the dominant defensive end, gone to graduation. Two just massive holes for this Army D. Second down, six from the 30. Quick throw out to the flat. Martell Moore makes the catch. First down as he surges ahead. Reggie Nesbitt in on the stop. First down, Huskies. Reggie Nesbitt right there, I mean, shows, you know, you have to have great poise. You know that those two defenders are bearing down, and you have to stay focused on that football. Nice job. Arnie shown a handoff. This is Womble, the ball carrier, loses his lid as he's brought down. Womble gets five inside the red zone again. Northern Illinois has been perfect tonight inside the red zone for four for four. And now Army needs to take a timeout to regroup. 2.48 to go here in the third quarter. Northern Illinois, remember this drive started back at their three-yard line. They've taken it all the way to the Army 18, leading 42-6. You know, as we were told before this game that uh, there's a game watch at Mikey Stadium on the campus of uh, West Point. And I know I can speak for our entire crew, the people down in the truck, Sean, myself, everybody up here, uh, when I say our hat is off to each and every one of you. I know this football game isn't going uh, the way you would like it to go, but understand you have, the, the, you have an unbelievable amount of respect from this entire country. And I know, again, speaking from all of us, thank you. Godspeed to each and every one of you. Yeah. And I, I, I'd be remiss not to read this quote. I want an officer for a secret and dangerous mission. Get me a West Point football player, General George Marshall, during World War II. And does that say it all or what? Well, you look so at all of you there watching the game. God bless you. Yeah, and we thank certainly you. echo those thoughts. You look at this program, 122nd year of intercollegiate competition, three national championships. Seven Lambert Trophy winners throughout the years. Just a, a rich tradition, one of the uh, proud programs here in this country. One of the greatest traditions, if, if not in the top one or two for sure, uh, of college football in the United States of America. Second down play, this is Womble. Uh, check that, actually they hand it off to Hopkins on the left side. Good carry out on the play fake as Hopkins goes hopping over the signage over on the far side. Talking about that Army tradition once again, the Black Knights uh, through the years and mentioned the three championships, three consecutive years. They've had five undefeated, untied seasons, 27 players, 27 inductees into the College Football Hall of Fame. Arnish on the keeper, minimal game, but he gets enough for the first down. And thousands into the Hall of Fame of life. Northern Illinois at the 11-yard line. They have it first and 10. They can still pick up a first down just inside the one. They bring in Luke Ekes. He caught a touchdown. He lines up as a tight end to the right. Here is a handoff to Hopkins. Nice misdirection up the middle to the six-yard line. He's just got, you know, he, he, he every runner has a different. Uh, how do you get those two seats, Sean? Primetime seats right there. <laughs> Look at that. This, that's big time. <laughs> somebody knows somebody. <laughs> They've been out in the rain all night, as have the uh, large crowd here this evening in DeKalb, but it has not certainly slowed down their spirit. They have had a fun night. Army forced to burn another timeout. That's two timeouts here in the final three minutes of this third quarter. 42 to 6, Northern Illinois on top. What a debut for Dave Doran. First game as head coach, long career as an assistant. 
16 years as an assistant coach, last five years as the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin. You've got to be a great fan to be sitting out in that rain <laughs> as those two people are out there. My hat is off to you. True Husky fans. Loyal all the way. You know, what a, what a pedigree uh, that Coach Dorn, uh, coaching pedigree that he comes here with. I mean, Wisconsin football right now uh, is, 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 is I, I love Wisconsin football. I mean, he was defensive coordinator. He was at Kansas, Montana. Assistant coach at, at USC and at his alma mater, Drake. I mean, he comes uh, well resume if there is such a term. And, uh, you know, Brett Palima up at, uh, up at Wisconsin was tutored by uh, Barry Alvarez. So he's, he's in that lineage. And I think that Wisconsin program, as I see it, is one of the great football programs in the country in this day. Dorn, a four-year letter winner at Drake. All academic squad as well. Here we go. Back to action after the timeout. Give his over the right side. Not much there. Army did a good job. Erzinger in on the stop of Hopkins. Bring up a third down. And again, they still can pick up a first down. Third and three at the four-yard line. You know, when you put a new staff together, there was only one holdover from the previous staff, and that was the linebackers coach, uh, Tom Matakevich. And uh, he's the only one. He was actually the interim head football coach when Jerry Kill went up to Minnesota. And to put a, assemble a staff as a new head football coach is, is not an easy task. You've got to get the right chemistry. You've got to get the right people. Fade pattern into the end zone. Touchdown, Martell Moore. Oh, wait. They're going to say he was out of bounds. One official said he was juggling it. The other indicated touchdown. But they're going to say Moore was juggling the football. And they're going to take away the touchdown. Let's decide. Tough to tell from that angle. Here we go. You'll be able to see it right here. Well thrown football. Good touch. Did he have possession? Remember in college football, all you need is one foot. I might uh, play as reviewable, I obviously. Would, I would review that play. And they will take a look up in the booth. Perfect throw by Harnish. Waverly Washington on the coverage never got his head turned around. That that view right there. This one really should tell to tell us what. I don't know. I, I, I myself I think that's a touchdown. It has to be disputable evidence on this one, and I'm not sure if it's there. Bob. You, you know, I talked about game management earlier with a new staff, and I, I am really impressed with Dave Dorn and his staff for being together in the first first game together as a staff. We haven't seen any errant substitution. We saw a few penalties here and there. Great communication, getting the right people in, uh, getting in the right play, good special teams, all those things. No, and especially with special teams. Special team substitution is usually where you're going to see a miscommunication, and they just didn't have it. It is a touchdown. They overrule it. Martell Moore able to get control, and it was that last foot that he was able to get control, get that left foot down. And Harnish has another touchdown pass, a 97-yard drive for the Huskies. I would never, ever, Sean, criticize an official. Not ever during my coaching career. But I will tell you this, I, what I really believe happened was, I think the, the official was focused on his hands and didn't get a look as to where he was when he finally secured the football. Matthew Sims on for the point after. Placement down. The kick is up. And it's good. Chandler Let's Harnish. Get another look at this. With his fifth touchdown pass. You be the judge. Martell Moore. I think he right almost there. has two feet down. I think, it, yeah. I think it's a good call from the booth. Fighting the raindrops into Cal. Martell Moore hauls in the touchdown pass. Sean, considering we've seen a steady rain, with the exception of one play or two plays here or there, I thought the ball security in this game has been pretty good, especially when you have an option team that's putting the ball up in the air in the flat net. I think that's it for Harnish. 
What a night for Chandler Harnish. Again, one of 30 national players for the Lowe Senior Class Award, the Walter Camp Player of the Year nominee, Davey O'Brien, all the major quarterback categories. Three-time All-Mac academic selection, and he is well on his way tonight. 12 of 19, 195 yards, five touchdowns. He's ran for another 11 carries, 80 yards. A great 2011 debut for Harnish. Johnny United's the Golden Arm Award. Johnny United opened a restaurant one time and he called it the Golden Arm. And you know what Sonny Jurgensen said? What's that? It was nice of John to name the place after me. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Sonny saying that. <laughs> There's a shallow kick that's picked up by one of the upbacks at the 30, up to the 35, 40, near midfield, and finally pushed out of bounds. Good return there by Larry Dixon, highly touted freshman, reserve fullback. One of the upbacks knew what to do with it when he caught it. He's a load to bring down. Minute 14 to go, third quarter, Army. Trailing Northern Illinois big, and you look at the schedule for the Black Knights coming up in these first three weeks, really difficult. The home opener at Mikey Stadium next Saturday when San Diego State comes to town. Then Northwestern from the Big Ten will visit West Point. I saw the Wildcats were beating Boston College earlier today on they the road. They did beat them. Did they end up yeah. winning? So the Wildcats, without their starting quarterback, Persa, able to pick up a win. So here is that Army schedule coming up. You have Northwestern, San Diego State, then a trip to Ball State. Four MAC teams on the schedule this year for the Black Knights. Tulane, Miami, Vanderbilt, Air Force, the Rutgers game, which is always a tradition. That's going to be at Yankee Stadium this year. Here's Steelman the throw, under distress, rolls to the right, fires over the middle, and McFarland jumps up and makes the catch. Nice grab, Jared McFarland, as Steelman floated it, and McFarland made the play. Excellent athleticism shown there by Jared McFarland. Now there is a marker near the line of scrimmage over on the Army sideline. Here's Ron Snodgrass. Personal foul. Illegal block, below the waist, offense, number 23, 15-yard penalty, second down. One of the new rules in place this year is to try to slow down those cut blocks, the blocks below the waist, downfield and away from the middle of the, the center to tackle area, and that's apparently what happened with Malcolm Brown. It's a rule implemented to keep players safe and again with this army attack and the triple option they rely on that block and that's I think key block the, inside the tackle. Coach Allerson's getting a ruling from that official there as to where the block took place and I think as you just mentioned makes all the difference of whether it's a penalty or whether it's a legal block. Second and 24 from the 36. Steelman wants the home run. Has a man out there. It's David Brooks and some contact and the markers come flying in. David Brooks, the big-time receiver from a year ago, the leading receiver from last season, had a step on where, and he was forced to interfere with him. I think this is an excellent call also. And I think it's, it, I, I think that's a prudent offensive Pass call. Interference. Get the ball down Defense, the field. Defense, number 24, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Here's the interference call on Dominique Ware, the redshirt sophomore, knew he was beat, and the collision with Brooks. You know, as soon as the receiver chokes his motor down, he puts that the defender in a position of jeopardy to, to get, you know, to get that defensive uh, pass interference call. It's an automatic first down for the Black Knights on what might be the final play of the quarter. 49-6 Northern Illinois. A little jet sweep action toward the near side. And getting ahead to the 40 up to the 38-yard line is Malcolm Brown. You know, Sean, we have not seen a gimmick play from West Point yet this evening. And if there, there was time to pull pull a trick out of the uh, out of the old gimmick bag, this is the time to do it. See if you can't get a quick strike and get on the board. Northern Illinois is tacked on some more. They now hold a comfortable 49-6 lead. What a night in the rain in DeKalb. It's all Huskies tonight. 49-6, we head to the fourth.
Chuck Kenny alongside Bob Camel, DeKalb, Illinois, as we start the fourth quarter, a long night for the Black Knights in their season opener. They trail it 49-6. to six. Second down play, Steelman, flush from the pocket, directing traffic downfield, floats it out there, and the pass is caught! What a catch by Brooks near the goal line! Great, great effort. Great, great effort. Great concentration. Ball was just a little bit overthrown. He's got the defender all over him. Here, it, this is good. This is great poise by by Steelman. Great poise. How about the concentration by Brooks. Absolutely. Ball was under thrown, thrown to his near shoulder. Black Knight Steelman following a center touchdown. Army. Good series for Army. Good, good series for Army. Very impressed with Steelman. Took off to his left, came around, turned around, came back, got focused, saw the whole field. Ball was a bit underthrown, as I said. Great, great adjustment by the receiver. And it looks like the Knights are going to go for two. Trent Steelman last year rushed for 11 touchdowns. He threw for seven more. Here he scores on the quarterback sneak from two yards out, and they will line up and go for two. See, get him out on the flat and give him a run pass option. McFarland right, that's the receiver they're looking to, trying to use that 6-5 frame, but the throw behind him, and the two-point conversion fails. Turned around, and the ball was underthrown. I'd like to see, I, I mean, I like this deal, but I'd like to get him out on the flat. I don't know about that fade. I'm not second-guessing or anything, but I'd like to see him out in the flat, maybe pump a couple times, put, uh, put, stop that corner in his tracks, and then run into the end zone. So Army takes it in for the score. The big play was a 37-yard hookup to David Brooks. That set up the Trent Steelman touchdown run. Look at the Steelman's numbers tonight. 15 carries, 18 yards, that touchdown. Throwing the football 5 of 10 for 86 yards. In four play, 49 yards. Here was a setup to Brooks that made it all possible. See, go one way and then come back the other way and, get, and yet get your shoulder square and be able to throw the football. Good push, excellent push, good wedge. Everybody hip to hip. Everybody just take a step inside and get a push. Stay pad under pad. Quarterback stays down low, be, becomes his own best blocker. Nice job. Will yeah. Wilson, the center, responsible for that initial push there on that touchdown run. You think Trent uh, Steelman's in good shape? It's not an option at his house. His <laughs> mom, Trish, she's running 50 marathons. Wow. 50 marathons. It makes me tired to think of running <laughs> one. End over in kick. This will be Tommy Davis near the goal line. Lost Ooh. his footing, and the ball is hung on to by Davis, but just a bad break there for Northern Illinois. So Tommy Davis and the Huskies will start at their own four-yard line. It's been raining all day, raining all night. You can still see it on your screen, and the turf gave way for Davis on that play. It has been a steady rain. Harnish is out. I think it's about time for uh, this young man to become a spectator. So we'll, we will get a prolonged look at Jordan Lynch here. Jordan Lynch from Mount Carmel High School, from the proud Chicago Catholic League, played his high school football for the legendary Frank Lenti, maybe one of the outstanding high school football coaches, not only in the greater Chicago area, but in the entire country. Frank Lenti has, uh, uh, he has to be 30 plus years at Mount Carmel. State championships, Catholic League championships, and has sent so many, so many great football players onto the collegiate level. Second down and seven for Lynch. Some new names in there, Pat McAvoy, redshirt senior fullback. This is Jamal Womble getting to the outside. Look at Lynch downfield throwing a block. Womble to the 20, finally pushed out of bounds and leading the way, the quarterback, Jordan Lynch. All right, we've got another legacy here that I was involved in. McAvoy wearing his dad's number, number 41. I actually coached his dad, who was an outstanding inside linebacker here at Northern Illinois. Came, came to us from Gordon Tech High School. Uh, oh, talk about a tough guy. Guy could love to play football. Great to see his son out here uh, wearing the Husky colors. 20-yard run by Womble. Here's Lynch throwing on the move. Pass caught. Pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. That's Wells with another catch. Let's go back to that last run by Womble and key in on the quarterback, Lynch. This is a guy that wants a little contact. <laughs> 
Hey, look, you can play football at Mount Carmel High School. I don't care what position you play. You are going to be a tough guy. Womble on the delay, trying to side shift his way to some open space, but Steven Erzinger would have nothing to do with that. Erzinger able to track him down. Now it looks like Erzinger is down. Remember, Army lost one of their leaders early in this game. Jarrett Mackey left with what appeared to be a knee injury. Again, we don't know the severity on that, but he has not returned. So their leader, their starter from last year gone, and Erzinger leaving with what appeared to be just a cramp as he went uh, limping off to the near side. Good to see Coach Dorn pulling it back a little bit, getting a lot of young guys reps in a game situation. Third down and four, looking right as Lynch, pass too tall, too hot to handle as it falls incomplete. Anthony Johnson, the intended target, bringing up a fourth down. Well, let's go to the coaches' drawing boards if we could here. And, and if you're Coach Ellerson and that Black Knight staff as you prepare for week two, and Obviously, how do you regroup a team after a, an opening week loss like this one tonight? Give them 24 hours to think about it. 24 hours to celebrate if you win. 24 hours to regroup if you lose and start to look to the future. Take all the good things that you've seen off of there. Make the corrections and come out and play again. Ryan Near on the pump for the first time tonight. Near gets a high kick. Fair catch signaled for and caught at the 34. So Army will send that offense back out. The triple option of the Black Knights. They scored on their last drive. Let's see what they can do here. 49-12. They love their football here in the MAC, especially in DeKalb. Some of the uh, brave students who have weathered the storm tonight. There's the Army band having some fun in the rain. 49-12, Northern Illinois with the lead. 12.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. Black Knights open up shop at the 35-yard line. Trent Steelman in under his center, Wilson. They hand it off. It's a quick handoff to Malcolm Brown. He's been the most effective runner, and there he goes again. Brown into Husky territory as one of the assistant coaches gets taken out on the play. And a trainer, too. Looks like she's all right. I'll tell you, if you're on that sideline and it starts to come to you, you find an escape route. Here's what happens. Okay, a little bit of football knowledge. If somebody's behind you, they don't move because <laughs> they don't see it playing, uh, the play coming, and wham, you are pinned between uh, the person behind you and the ball carrier. Six carries, 72 yards for Malcolm Brown. He'll get another load here, 40, 35, up to the 32-yard line. Good yardage for Brown. 14 more and another Black Knight first down. Right here, just keep giving him the football. You get a, a back that, that gets into a rhythm. It's uncanny. It's almost like as the game progresses, if you've had a, a great run, a great night, at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, evening, you're just as fresh as you were when the game started. You, you got to get that go-to guy. Here is Dixon. Not much there that time as Northern Illinois shut it down. Baxter in on the stop along with Jenkins. Kyle Jenkins, 6'4", defensive end, 257-pounder. Redshirt senior. Played on the offensive line last year. Actually served as a tight end. He has switched positions. Now learning that DN spot. Good physical presence for Coach Doran. Second and nine. Quick hitch pattern. Too tall over the 6'5", McFarland incomplete. I'd come back with the hitch and go to McFarland. Pop that football to him one time and send him downfield. Throw the ball up in the air and let him go and get it. Third down and nine for Army. Anthony Stevens checks in for the cadets. He lines up to the top of the field. Receiver right is McFarland. In motion is Cobb. That's the first time we've seen him. Steelman under pressure is going to try and improvise. Marker tossed. This is Steelman to the 20, getting out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Well, maybe that was just a handkerchief that fell from one of the offensive linemen from Army. Something. I think like it was Kelly. a moth. Is that what it was? One great big yellow moth. <laughs> I thought it was a flag, too. I was about to say that was thrown in the area of holding. 14-yard run by Steelman, showing his ability to break away. Inside the red zone, second back through. Not much there. Northern Illinois able to shoot their way through. 
Ball carrier that time for the Black Knights was Trenton Turrentine. Turrentine has a touchdown run. In fact, his very first carry as a Black Knight resulted in a touchdown earlier in the first half. That'll be something he'll remember for the rest of his life. I mean, that is huge. You're an Army football player. The first time you carry the ball, you score a touchdown. Larry Dixon on second down. Army one of four independents right now in Division One: Navy, BYU, and Notre Dame. How did you feel about BYU leaving the conference and going independent? Yeah, that was a, an interesting move. I it sure was. I think they'll have success, but certainly a hit. There's second down give over the left side. Not much cooking again. The reserves doing a nice job here with their red zone defense. Shooting through was Jason Meehan for Northern Illinois. Malcolm Brown is approaching that 100-yard plateau. Eight carries, 91 yards for Brown. Give him a little rest here. Able to pick up enough for the first down. So Army will have four cracks at it from the six-yard line. Wishbone formation. McFarland the receiver right. Stevens to the top. They hand the ball off. He's twisting his Turrentine inside the five. See, uh, uh, that basically right there, when you've got two backs going one way in a misdirection football, and you come back with a back the other way, you've got those linebackers. That's a lot of pull on a defense. Two, two running backs going in one direction. You start to shuffle that way. Quarterback comes in back in the opposite direction. Uh, again, just a fundamental counterplay. Jordan Delegal is the injured Husky, the starting outside linebacker, the junior college transfer. He's really been... A mentor for Jamal Bass this year. Both are from the state of Florida, and he kind of gave Bass a pep talk right before fall ball began, saying, hey, you have a chance to, to get into this starting lineup, and Bass has certainly stepped up. All Broward County first-teamer for Miramar High School, and Delegal kind of taking the lead role and showing him the ropes here at DeKalb. Sean, one of the things I... Uh, I believe you cannot be a good football team without good senior leadership. Second down and goal. Steelman hands it to Dixon. Not, uh, not that time. Shooting through. First back in for the Huskies, Ron Newcomb, 280-pound redshirt senior. Newcomb and Baxter right now, the two down tackles in that Husky defense. I mean, talked about a great opportunity for these young guys that don't play an awful lot. I mean, from a morale standpoint, uh, from a point of optimism, looking down the, uh, the, the depth chart. Steelman bootlegs right, pumps, dives for the pylon. Did he get in? No. They're going to say the ball out at the one. Little bootleg action by Steelman, trying to use that athleticism. Gave it his all as he plunged toward the front pylon. I have just short, but check out this face. Sean, he had me faked. I was looking. And see, he, 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 it was a hand fake, and he took the football and brought it to his midsection. That was an excellent fake. Fourth and goal. Great mechanics. And now timeout taken by Northern Illinois. They want to come up with the goal line stand. This reserve unit wants to come up with a play here, so they're going to take a T.O. Eight. 32 to go, fourth quarter. Army will have it fourth and goal from the one-yard line. See, Steel, Steelman here, what he shows here, uh, talk about mechanics and talk about being one of, being a complete football player. He fake, had the hand fake and looked toward the back, which really sold the fake, and then took the football and put it to his midsection and he, uh, kept it out of uh, a view of the defenders and, and just took off with the football. Those mechanics will separate an average player and take an average player with great mechanics and make him a better player and take a good player and make him a great player. You see Ian Shields, the offensive coordinator for this proud Army football program, beginning their 122nd year of intercollegiate competition. Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, Pete Dawkins. If you're a fan of college football, young or old, you've heard of those three men. There's no doubt about it. 649 wins for Army. 27 inductees into the College Football Hall of Fame. Phenomenal. 
next Saturday when they host San Diego State at Mikey Stadium. That's going to mark the 87th year that Army football has took place at Mikey. Here we go. Fourth and goal for the Black Knights. Steelman, like he has all night, looking instructions on the near side. Use the cadence, young man. Use the cadence for deception. Dixon is the fullback. The slot to the right is Malcolm Brown. Brown in motion, gets the call, needs a block, trying to get to the corner, touchdown. Picked up the block around the end from Raymond Maples, and Brown, who was the workhorse on that drive, is rewarded with a touchdown. I mean, that was a good call. I don't know if that was from the bench or if Steelman made that call himself, but Northern had eight, nine, ten people committed between the tackles to, to an inside run. Three between guard, uh, from guard to guard. Good call to the outside, good physical effort. 49-18, to 18, the Black Knights getting some late touchdowns. They're going to try for two with Steelman. This time they're going to put the slot back to the left. Here is Steelman on the option. Big hole, and he'll go in well done. untouched. Well done. Well done. So Malcolm Brown on the fourth and goal. Able to get into the end zone, and it's Steelman with the two-point conversion. 8.27 to go, fourth quarter. Something to cheer about for the cadets from West Point. 49-20, Huskies. Army goes 66 yards and 12 plays. Four minutes, eight seconds off the game clock. Let's go back to that uh, two-point conversion on the option look here for Steelman. Well-executed option play. Very well-executed. Hat on a hat. Great block here by the fullback. Chop block inside. Good job by the people on the outside. That, that, that's how it's done. And that's how it will be done for Army as they progress uh, through the season. Larry Dixon with that key block that propelled Steelman into the end zone. Tommy Davis, who slipped on his last return, keeps his footing straight up the middle, 20, up ahead to the 25, tries to bounce out, but nowhere to go. He is wrapped up on the play. Waverly Washington in on special teams along with Tyler Dixon. Those are your two safety players for the Black Knights in on the special teams coverage. One of the things here in a situation like this, if you could get a couple walk-ons in the game, and, and, and these guys, I mean, they toil day in and day out, and, you know, there's never a promise of playing time. There's never a promise that, that you're going to have an opportunity to travel. But from a, you can't have a great football team without a great walk-on program. Get a few of those guys in the game, the optimism that one day maybe they're going to get some play, that they did get playing time. Uh, when you go out to practice again on Monday, that, that is huge for morale. We have not had the rule, the new rule, that I'm yet to understand, Sean. And which one is that? With the last, uh, at the end of the half, end of the... Uh, oh, the, the clock runoff. Clock runoff. The 10-second runoff. And what that is, in the inside of a minute to go in each half, the first and second half, if the opposing team commits a penalty, then you have the choice of taking the penalty yardage and also taking a 10-second runoff. You also have the choice, obviously, to take the yardage and uh, decline the runoff because in some cir circumstances you want the, time. You want the football uh, as a defense so you want that time so one of the uh, new rule changes along with the Illegal excessive formation offense five men in the backfield five yard penalty Second down. And that's a penalty that's been around for a while, the illegal formation call. Another rule change uh, this year, the excessive celebration. If a player goes into celebration mode before reaching the end zone and he scores, they're going to wipe out the touchdown and mark off the penalty from where he went into the, uh, into the taunting tactics, if you will. Second down and 11 from the 23-yard line. Jordan Lynch, again, the reserve quarterback in there, replacing Harnish, who just had a huge night for this uh, Husky offense. Five touchdown passes, plus he ran for another. This is Leighton Settle. Settle fighting for yardage across the 25. Settle enrolled here at Northern Illinois in January. Came to DeKalb from California, where he was part of the Fresno City Community College team. Has good talent, good speed. They describe him as a change of pace back. When you talk about a mentoring program, the older guys mentoring the younger guys, that's especially for young guys that come a great, from a great distance. 
There's a throw over the middle, right on stride. First down, up to the 46-yard line. Anthony Johnson with the reception. Not a real hard throw by Lynch, but he led his receiver perfectly. Moved the chains, a Husky first down. He is a confident looking young man. His body language is that absolutely that of a, of a leader. Well thrown football. And again, great job of beating zone coverage. Checked off the linebacker and opened up a lane for Johnson to work over the middle. Lynch now in relief, two for four, 25 yards. Two tight ends in for the Huskies. And off is to settle, and he has nowhere to go. Steven Erzinger, good to see him back in there, the legacy captain for the Black Knights. Erzinger in on the stop, along with uh, Shola Mustafa. You know, you mentioned the legacy captain. It's one thing to be elected to a position by a group, by coaches or a group of your peers, guys in your class. But when the upperclassmen give you that distinction, that is really, uh, as I mentioned before, just a huge honor. You look at the captains this year for Army, Max Jenkins, the backup quarterback, and Andrew Rodriguez, who has made a spirited comeback from a pretty serious back injury. All these captains were voted on by the team. We mentioned the legacy captain for Erzinger last year, but Jenkins and Rodriguez were named by the team this year, and that's a little bit of a twist for Army because typically Rich Ellerson likes to rotate his captains for the first half of the season and then name permanent ones somewhere after that week seven, week eight portion of the schedule. But the guys felt so confident in Jenkins and Rodriguez, they wanted them to be the captains, and Ellerson agreed. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement with that. I, I, uh, I, you know, and every coach has different ideas on this thing. I, I for, to me, you elect captains at the beginning of the year, and they are your captains. Nobody knows uh, the personalities and leadership ability better than, than the players on the team, even more so than the coaching staff. Third down passing situation for Jordan Lynch. 49-20, Huskies on top. Lynch wants to set up the screen. Pass is caught, but Army defends it well. Womble the reception. Erzinger slowed it down enough. Help arrived from his teammate, A.J. Mackey. We saw that screen to Womble go for a touchdown earlier. Not that time. Mackey and Erginger close it down. And there's an old saying in football, you can't anoint or appoint leadership. Players know. Play, I mean, you, you take a vote as a team, and all of a sudden somebody's in there, and you're kind of saying to yourself, well, you know, how did this happen? They know exactly who the captain should be. They know who's a leader off the field. They know who, who obeys each and every one of the rules and, and, and can instill uh, motivation to teammates. Army's going to set up the return. It's a high, shallow kick for Josh Jackson. It's going to take a friendly bounce for the Huskies, roll inside the 20, and is touched dead at Prudent the 17 yard line. Jackson. Huskies in control as we wind this one down. Week one of the college football season. Northern Illinois from the get-go tonight. Huskies 49, Black Knights 20. Back with more after this. You know, as we look toward the, uh, the end zone here, we see the Jeff and Kimberly Jordan uh, Center. What a magnificent football facility. I mean, it is state of the art. And it is not only a, a, a great uh, recruiting tool, obviously, which shows a commitment, but it is also a place for football players to come on a daily basis and athletes to come on a daily play basis to enhance their athletic ability, but also their academic ability. There's classrooms, there's computers, and what a great and generous gift by the Jordan family. And I will tell you, all across the uh, landscape of college football, that's as good as I've seen. New quarterback is Max Jenkins. We were just talking about the backup signal caller named team captain as he's running for his life here and wisely throws it away. Jenkins is a great story. Senior quarterback has been playing under Trent Steelman, has an excellent understanding of the game. Back last year, he came in during the Hawaii contest. Game still up in the air. Steelman was jarred. Jenkins came in, scored on his very first carry. 6'2 sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Third and inches, second back through. This is Kalechi Odocha with the ball carry, and he'll get the first down. Adocha with the first down run for Army. You know, Jeff Confer is the athletic director here at Northern Illinois. He's done a magnificent job, and he was handed the reins uh, when Jim Phillips 
moved down to Northwestern University, but Jim was really instrumental, Jim Phillips, Dr. Jim Phillips, instrumental in raising money for that Jordan Center. This is Jenkins on the option. He will pitch it, and they have the corner. 40 up near midfield to the 48-yard line, 22 yards on the option pitch to Trenton Turretine. You know, and Jeff, it's just not the Jordan Center. The facilities all around campus athletically are fantastic. There's the option by Jenkins. Good pitch, and then Turrentine took it from there. Good opening night for Trenton Turrentine. He has a great future in Army football. Ten carries, 63 yards, and a touchdown. First and ten from the 48. It's a quick hitter to Dixon straight up the gut. Dixon moving the pile ahead. Look at that beehive tackling from Northern Illinois. Eight yards for Larry Dixon, the true freshman, six foot, 220 pounder, and he is a load. The hallmark of any great defense is pursuit. 11 helmets on the football every single play. You can't emphasize that enough. You practice it on a daily basis. And it's also a matter of pride being the first person to the football. Second down in a yard from the 39. This is Turrentine. He'll pick up the first down. Turrentine scrapes ahead. You know, one player we really haven't talked much about tonight was the junior fullback, Jared Hassan. Hassan, if you recall, struggled the first four games last year, but boy, he really turned it on. The Tulane game is what got him going. Rushed for 144 yards against the Green Wave. The first of four consecutive 100-yard games, and if Army's going to make a repeat bull appearance as Jenkins fires sing complete down the side, if Army's going to get back into the bowl pitcher, they need Hassan because you hit it on the button and a triple option, that fullback so critical. I think Army's got a, an argument here for pass interference. Yeah, Jenkins looking down the side. There was some contact along the sideline, but, but no marker. And that's not reviewable. And at 35 to go. In the contest, here comes Brian Cobbs. Cobbs trying to get his health back. The junior saw extensive time last year, but was slowed up during the spring and fall. Jenkins to throw, rolls right, sets his feet, fires, and it's a strike. Passes caught. Well, he shows good arm strength here. That out route uh, to the boundary is always a determiner of the ability to throw the football. Throw the football with great arm strength. Siobhan Lawrence with that reception. Army lining the ball up. They have it at the 25. 90 seconds to go. This is Dixon, the fullback, and Northern Illinois stuffs the play. Jefferson, the ball Jefferson, the down tackle, the first one in there for the Huskies. We did not see one gimmick play this evening from either football team. No. Amazing. Northern Illinois really did Amazing. not need it tonight. No, did they? they didn't need it. Keep that, we'll keep those in the bank. Let's not show those off to our next opponent. Second down and 10 in motion is Cobbs. Jenkins, straight drop, looking for the end zone, incomplete. Double coverage, he was looking once again for Lawrence, but good coverage on the play by the secondary. Marquis Hayes, redshirt freshman, defending for Northern Illinois. In case you're just joining us, Northern Illinois blocked a punt, returned it for a touchdown. Courtney Steven with the return for the score. That, hope, that happened in the opening two minutes, and that kind of set the tone for the rest of the night. They had a 35-6 advantage at halftime. Led 49-12 and a couple of Army scores as Cobbs gets the call. Escorted out of bounds once again by Marquis Hayes. Good decision there. Good decision to pitch the football. You look ahead to what this Northern Illinois team has. Next week, it's a big 12 matchup against Kansas down in Lawrence. Turner Gill guiding the Jayhawks. And then in two weeks, it's a big one. You're from this area. Soldier Field, Wisconsin. There's a handoff to Cobbs, trying to get to the corner, stretching the play, and he is tripped up. Good defensive play made by Victor Jakes. I like that game. I, I really do. I like going to uh, to Soldier Field to play that game. I I, I think it's it's exciting. I think I think there'll be a great crowd. Wisconsin will bring a lot of people. Obviously, Northern Illinois. I mean, you come to your home field, you take a lot of pride in it. But every now and then, a little change up, going to that tradition-rich. Uh, uh, stadium on the Soldier Field on, uh, on, on Lake Michigan. Wow. Fourth down for the Black Knights. 
This is Jenkins stuttering, looking for some room, and he won't get there. Jenkins tripped up. It's like, well, it might be close. He might get enough. They are going to give him a favorable spot, and Jenkins <laughs> did not look like he had much to work with, but he's able to, to pick up the first down. There's Dave Doran. How special will that be? We mentioned spent the last five years as a D coordinator at Wisconsin. Now he gets to take on the Badgers in Soldier Field. Jenkins looking for the end zone. McFarland's there. Touchdown. Black Great Knights. Job, Great job by young McFarland. Jared McFarland with the touchdown reception. Jenkins takes the Black Knight offense down the field. Max Jenkins with the touchdown. Pass. Well thrown football. And as you look at Dave Dorn on the sideline, he's not looking at that scoreboard. He's thinking, how did this happen? How are we going to defend it? How, how are we going to, you know, it's going to be t tomorrow or the next day it will be in the meeting room. Why did that happen? On and on and on. I mean, he's just that kind of a football coach, a hardcore fundamentalist. He's a well-coached football team. 11-yard touchdown pass. Now Army for two. Jenkins rolling right, throws to the back of the end zone. That time too tall for McFarland. And don't ask Dorn, the game at Soldier Field against Wisconsin that you just came from is not going to be any bigger than any other. Oh, no, it's not going to be any bigger than any. He won't sleep from Thursday on. You look at what has transpired here tonight in DeKalb in Northern Illinois about to break a streak in which they've lost seven straight openers. Here's how it all started. The block punt picked up by Courtney Steven as he returned it for a touchdown. That happened in the opening two minutes. Army's defense then forcing a turnover. Andrew Rodriguez with the recovery. That would lead to this play by Steelman as he pitched it to Trenton Torrentine on his first carry as a Black Knight. He found pay dirt as he goes skipping into the end zone. Harnish then, the first of five touchdown passes. Luke Ekis with the reception. And that Northern Illinois defense forcing another turnover. Interception by Sean Melvin and Harnish finding Anthony Palmer. Front of the end zone, Palmer with a nice mid-air adjustment. Army with some uncharacteristic mistakes. That one near the goal line. And then Harnish off the back foot, picked off on a nice read by Tyler Dixon. Harnish only blemish of the night. Here's the screen to Womble. It's been that type of night. 511 yards offense by Northern Illinois, 49 to 26. I mentioned for the uh, Huskies, one of the themes here in the fall for Coach Dorn has been start fast, start fast. And this is a senior class that has never won their opening game. They had dropped their last seven openers. While on the other side, Army had defeated Eastern Michigan in the openers the past two years. So the Huskies able to turn the table. They are now 1-0. The seniors can enjoy that as they get set for the Week 2 matchup next Saturday down in Lawrence. Well, if he emphasized starting fast, he sure achieved it. His team achieved it. His coaching staff achieved it. Hats off to them. 511 yards of offense at the Division One level of football. Uh, I mean, that is unbelievable. And, you know, and, and, and again, Sean, hats off to these young people uh, that wear the uniform or going to wear the uniform of our country. I mean, they just represent themselves so well, they represented the academy so well, and, and best to all of them as they proceed, and, and Coach Allerson as they proceed into their season. Dave Dorn shaking hands. There is Mr. Harnish, Chandler Harnish. 12 of 19, five touchdowns, 195 yards. He added 80 more on the ground, ran for a touchdown. This high-powered Northern Illinois offense off to a strong start this year. They take care of business tonight. Northern Illinois 49, Army 26. So for the coach, Bob Camel, I'm Sean Kenny saying so long from DeKalb where your final score, Northern Illinois 49, Army 26. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN. Thanks everybody for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.